the Hard Talk with Jakim Show. The views expressed at or through this broadcast is those of the individual host and guests in their individual capacities only. The information provided on this broadcast does not and is not intended to constitute legal advice. Instead, all information, content, and material available on this broadcast are for general informational purposes only. All viewers should contact their attorney to obtain advice with respect to any and all legal matters. Peace and blessings. This is Jock Kim from the Hard Talk with Jock Kim Show. Can't get enough of the Hard Talk with Jock Kim Show? You can email us at btom6164 at gmail.com. That's B-T-H-O-M-P-6164 at gmail.com. Peace. Peace, fam. This is Jack Kim from the Hard Talk with Jack Kim Show. You can connect with us on Instagram, TikTok, X, and on YouTube at Delaware Info Now or at The Real Jack Kim. Peace. Peace, fam. This is Jack Kim from the Hard Talk with Jack Kim Show. You can connect with us on Instagram, TikTok, X, and on YouTube at Delaware Info Now or at The Real Jack Kim. Peace. Peace and blessings, fam. Well, what's up? This is Jack Kim from the Hard Talk with Jack Kim Show. Listen, it's a Friday, and it's Friday, December 8th, and we are going to uh, end this year with a big, 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 big bang. Listen, I got a great guest for you tonight, and we're going to get into that. But before we do that, uh, remember, you can always get us at the at a btom6164, that's B-T-H-O-M-P-6164 at gmail.com. That's at gmail.com. Listen, I got a lot of your uh, emails. Uh, yeah, your racist emails, all oh that. I got all those emails. I love it. Thank you. Keep it coming. I love it. I love it. But I've got a great guest for you tonight. I got, we're going to be talking about a real issue. So I'm not going to do too much politics tonight. We'll do that next week. But I've got a real issue about health, wellness in the black community. This is real. And tonight I've got Sister Nicole Surrett. And she's going to tell you what she do, where she do it at, and how you can get in contact with her. Sister Nicole Surrett, thank you for coming on. Uh, give the people all the stuff that you do. Thank you so much for the invite. Uh, I am a holistic health and stress coach. I focus on stress. Let me back up. I focus on the whole person, which is why I use the term holistic. Sometimes when we talk about health, people just limit it to the physical. We can't do that. Health is so much more than that. It is the physical, but it's also the mental, emotional, spiritual, financial, occupational, relational, social. It's all of that. And if one of those areas is out of sync, there's the potential that they could all fall down like dominoes. And so I focus on the whole person and stress is really my focus because stress is a societal epidemic. It is wreaking havoc, as you know, in our personal and professional lives. And it can lead to chronic health conditions, especially over long periods of time. And I believe that it played a role in my diagnosis. So as a breast cancer thriver, I don't want people to wait until they get a diagnosis of any type. Whether it's cancer, high blood pressure, heart disease, those chronic health conditions should not be the wake up calls that force us to pay more attention to our health and wellness practices. I, so, listen, I, I agree with you 100%, sister. You are absolutely, and, and, and listen, I want our viewers to understand that you are a breast cancer survivor. And to survive any type of cancer is, is to me, monumental because it is something that a lot of our people in our communities are going through day in and day out. What do you say about that? Oh, boy. Um, I got a lot to say about that. <laughs> <laughs> you know, for me, I, I, I know that stress played a huge role in my diagnosis. And, you know, sometimes as it relates to our health, we are so busy being busy that we're not paying attention to the signs. I've had a number of women say to me, I didn't know how high my blood pressure was until I found myself in the ER or at MedExpress. So if you think about your car, 
there's a there's a dashboard and every now and then things light up and if you are a, a wise person when the engine light shows up <laughs> the tire light or the fuel light if any of those show up it would be to your advantage to get the t- tire pressure checked to put some gas in the car or have it serviced and our bodies are giving us signals and we're not paying attention. And yes. so we really have we really have to change that. To answer your question about breast cancer, our numbers for breast cancer So let me let me back up a little bit. White women are diagnosed with breast cancer at higher rates. But black women are dying right rates. right so, so that's a problem um there are different types of breast cancer and one that is very aggressive is called triple negative breast cancer a whole lot of people have not heard of it some of my bosom buddies as i affectionately call them <laughs> have heard of, of triple negative breast cancer but it is an aggressive type of cancer that is impacting young women of color And so when I say young women of color, I'm talking about in their 20s. And I have heard one too many stories of a young woman saying something didn't look right, something didn't feel right. I went to the doctor. Doctor said, "You're too young for breast cancer. Come back and see me next year." They followed that advice. They show up and not only is it breast cancer, but it's triple negative breast cancer. So let me let me ask you a question then. Um, this, this triple negative breast cancer, it, it's high among uh, black women. Is that the that the impression that we're getting from the statistics? Yes, it's. I'll say women of color because it's not okay. just black women, but women of color. All right, and and I, you know, just like any other cancer, because my mother had cancer too. She had a different one. It looks like we have a comment here. Um, just like any other cancer. How much do you believe? And thank you, Lewis. Lewis Jones is checked in. Big shout out to the Cool People Group. Uh, thank you. Um, how much do you believe that is not only? I heard you say stress, but how much do you believe that it's environment and maybe habits as well? Oh, absolutely, absolutely. Oh, I, it's a combination. Um, I will say that most people who have breast cancer, and I said people not women because men right. have breast cancer as well. Like right. Richard Roundtree, the shaft had breast cancer. Yes. Um, actually Beyoncé's father, Matthew Knowles. That's right, Beyoncé. Yes. Breast cancer. Yes. And there are there are women who don't know that men can get breast breast cancer. There are men who don't know that men can get breast cancer. So as long as you have breasts and men do have breasts, um they just don't have as much um breast tissue as women do. They can get cancer just as just as much as um people of color can get skin cancer. That If is correct. Skin, you can get skin cancer. If you have teeth, you can get cavities regardless of how old you are. That's so, a good point. Oh, yeah. you don't don't fluff over that. That's an excellent <laughs> point. If you got breast, you can get breast cancer. If you got teeth, you can get cavities. Yeah. This is important for people to understand out there. And if you're watching this on YouTube uh 24 hours later, I need you to understand that. Uh I, I used to have a, a neighbor that used to tell me stuff like that. Does my dog bite? He said, he said yeah, well, the dog got teeth, teeth he bites. <laughs> no, I don't know what to tell you about that. Yeah, but so, you're but right. You're absolutely right. It's a combination right. of some of the factors that you you brought up. It's lifestyle. It is environmental. It is stress. And I don't know if you remember, it was before COVID, but of course, what wasn't before COVID? Right. Um, <laughs> They there was an article about cancer clusters in Delaware. Do you yes. remember that? Sure. I was doing a presentation for city council and I was doing it on behalf of a, a breast cancer organization and I did my presentation for them. But before I told took my seat, I said to them, I would be remiss if I don't say something about this article. And as you remember, they identified these hot spots, these cancer hot spots mm-hmm. in Delaware. That is and correct. All of them were in communities of color. None of them were in Greenville. They were in communities of color. 
And my husband is from Dunleaf. And Dunleaf was mentioned as one of those communities. And I said to him, are you surprised that Dunleaf is on this list? And he said, no. He said, because I can remember growing up with people who never smoked, but ended up with lung cancer. So you know that you mentioned that Route 9 corridor. It is right over there next to the bridge. We've got factories. We've got smoke. Well, hold, hold, hold on. Let me just, let me just. I live on the, in the planet of Dunleaf. So I live in the planet of Dunleaf. You ain't got to tell me because I was on a news journal on the front page last year in April. If you don't know, go check out the news journal. You'll see Jack Kim Muhammad talking about Crota. Uh, which I have been advocating against a lot of us in this environmental stuff on the Route 9 corridor for a number of years now. So on the front page of the Delaware News Journal, um, I said that we were living, the Route 9 area right off the Delaware Memorial Bridge was living with a, with a time bomb. Because you know what happened a couple of Thanksgivings ago over at Crota when they closed down the bridge? This was taken by my congresswoman. She didn't give me the credit for it. Lisa Blunt Rochester, I'm a name her. She didn't give me the credit for it, but it was my comment that was on lead with my picture on uh, the news journal. So I know exactly, but I need y'all out there to understand that the environment in which you live in can also be a extenuating factor in you getting diseases. Absolutely. Am I right, Ron? Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. So, you know, we have to put the work in in black communities to make sure we don't give permission to polluters, because since we have all of these things in black communities where we don't have adequate health care, we don't have a lot of stuff that we we're, uh, for. I'm, we're going to talk about food. And I know I got a comment over here. Somebody said, talk about the food. I'm going to talk about the food. But all those it, uh, interplay all those are what we call uh interplay between each other mm -hmm. means that we have to be even more vigilant Absolutely. in black communities Absolutely. what do you say about that I, I agree i agree and before we switch out of the whole breast cancer thing so we know that triple negative is a problem the bigger problem for delaware is that we are number one in the country for triple negative breast cancer. Oh, Lord. Again, we're number one for something negative. The and so when I, when I go to Capitol Hill and I'm speaking to our representatives, you know, I tell them, yes, we are the first state, but we do not want to be number one for breast cancer or anything like that. And, and we need to know kind of what we can do to reduce our risk of cancers. One of them, which is why I love the title of your, your program, is that you talk about the hard talk. We need to be having conversations in our families about family medical history. Yes. And I know that cancer is one of those things, you know, the, the big C that we've been sweeping under the, the carpet. Time out for that. We need to have conversations because I will say that most people who get a breast cancer diagnosis diagnosis do not have family history. So if somebody is, is watching or listening and they're like, well, I have breast cancer. Nobody else in my family has breast cancer. Don't think that that is odd. So, but we need to be talking about the, the high blood pressure and things like that, because there's some things where there's a greater degree of connectivity. And when we talk about family history for breast cancer, it's not just on your mother's side. It's on your father's side, too, because there are male cancers like prostate cancer that have a connection to breast cancer. So we've got to have the, we, we've got to start the conversations. We need to be recording it and we need to be sharing it not only with our medical practitioners, but with other members of the family. And I think if you do anything other than that. That's a disservice to future generations. Well, let me let me just say this. Um, anybody who's had black family in this country will know that um, getting medical information from your your parents and your grandparents can be pretty difficult because a lot of times I and I know it from being in law enforcement in New York, uh, a lot of times 
the med the medical people in the coroner may have just put down that the person died of heart disease, but it really didn't happen that way in the 1940s, 50s, 60s. It may have been something extensive, but because they were black, they they go to do well. Okay, it was natural causes heart disease. That is important, but what I find is is even more important is. Do you believe, and here's the question before we go on our first break, do you believe that it is important for you, especially how insurance companies treat pre-existing conditions, that you tell your doctor everything that might be possible because you may not get insurance? I don't know. And, and one that's one of the things that we have to realize. This is an industry it is it's about money and making money i can remember a number of years ago talking with someone else who was a survivor and she said to me can you give me some strategies she said i was just diagnosed as being pre-diabetic mm -hmm. can you give me some 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 tips of, of some changes that i can make and the first thing i asked her is do you have access to a nutritionist and she said, well, my insurance company won't pay for a nutritionist until I'm a full-blown diabetic. Well, what sense does that make? Because you have somebody who's willing to make some changes now and they have to wait until those numbers put them into that diabetic range. That doesn't make sense. It's gonna cost the insurance company more money and it's probably gonna be more challenging for her to get it under control. So we've got to be more proactive instead of reactive about our health. And the insurance companies, they're just not on board with that. Yes, you're absolutely right. Listen, I'm going to give you a chance to get some, uh, something to drink. I'm going to be right back. Listen, this is Jaquem Muhammad with the Hard Talk with Jaquem Show. Listen, we've got Nicole Nasserat. She's going to be here for a minute. We're going to get some more information. I'm going to be right back. We're going to listen to Sister Shirley Caesar, the late, great Shirley Chisholm about Shirley Caesar. Uh, I was just thinking about that song. I have to play. Uh, <laughs> Uh, beans, greens, blah, blah, blah. I was like, ah, that's the holiday. I saw that. <laughs> we'll talk about soul food very shortly, but I'll be right back with Shirley Chisholm. Check it out. You women better wake up if you want to help to change America around. You do the work. You better wake up and don't be afraid. Have confidence in yourself. And the ability that you have is ability and talent given to you by God. And don't let anybody use you don't let people continue to use you and to manipulate you the only thing that you have is your integrity and the principles and the convictions of what we are fighting for in america in terms of opening up this system so that a lot of people can really feel that they can participate in it and not have that small tight few that continues to manipulate every one of us Listen, that was the late great Shirley Chisholm. And uh, yeah, I met her when I was very, very young in Brooklyn. And she was a great congresswoman. Um, but she she mentions that point about women. You have to wake up. And and I, I'm a big advocate as, as part of the do domestic violence ambassador here in Delaware. I'm a big advocate of women waking up and taking their rightful place and their rightful power. That doesn't mean that it's a masculine power. I'm talking about a feminine power. And one of those feminine powers is being empowered about your body, is being empowered about your health and wellness. And, uh, I, okay, we got Nicole Surratt again. Now, Nicole, we did not give the people how they can get in contact with you. How can they get in contact with you? You can go to my website. It's pretty simple, ahealthcoachforme.com. And it's not the numeric for it's F O R a health coach for me. You can see more about, you know, what I do, why I do it. Um, because again, I don't want, I don't want you to have to experience, you know, what, what I call my pink sea journey or anything like that. Again, we've got to be more proactive as opposed to being reactive about our health. Um, you can contact me there. I do one-on-one -on -one health coaching. I also do, um, group detoxes. So I'm excited about my detox in January. It's called Detox Your Plate and Your Mental State. The, and it's, it's, a, it's a detox that will help people change their relationship with food as well as stress. 
because stressful situations can lead us to food and food can be stressful. So I'll take care of both of those. I also do a one-on-one -on -one coaching. I'm doing a new model where you can get 15 minutes unlimited coaching for three months. And um, because I'm on the show now, I will honor my 2023 prices. So just reach out to me. And the other thing that I'm getting ready to do, I'm excited about it, uh, Jaquim, is I am hosting a health conference in April. April is Stress Awareness Month. So it will be Saturday, April 13th at Bootless Stage Works um, on Broom Street in Wilmington. And it's called My Health Means More in 2024. So I'm really, really excited about that. All right. Well, excellent. Well, you know, um, uh, most of my viewers already know it. Uh, I've done so many things. But one of the things that I'm really proud of is being a uh, conditioning coach. Mm -hmm. And one of those, I, I had gotten a certified in New York City and I got certified down here. When I first came down here, I had a lot of clients that were doing conditioning with me. And one of those things, and we're going to get on the food thing. One of those things that I've always said was overconsumption of food and overconsumption of sex and overconsumption of chocolate and drugs and every, all of that stuff. Anything that is overconsumed will turn out bad for you. And I used to tell my clients that all the time. And when we we're doing uh, squats or, or, or push-ups or sit-ups or, or any of the weight training, you're not going to. If you really want to see results, it's not in the weight room that you need to. It's in that kitchen. What do you say about that? I agree wholeheartedly. You know, food is what we need to fuel our bodies. And unfortunately, a whole lot of people are living to eat instead of eating to live. Yeah, we know that book, too. <laughs> And, and we've got to we've got to turn things around. And again, we need to understand that this is a business. The food manufacturers do not care about your bot, your waistline. They care about their bottom line. So one of the big it's it's considered actually one of the, the biggest issues in food production is sugar. So we've got to be educated consumers. When you read the back of the label, which is something that we're not doing. Yes. Uh, we don't know how to necessarily read and properly interpret those labels. They may not put sugar, S-U-G-A-R, on that label. But we need to know those other words for sugar, like sucrose and fructose. And, and, and corn syrup. Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. So we've got to know that. Um, and once we, we know better, we've got to do better. Right. You know, we we say that a lot and a lot of people hear that uh, whether we talk about high uh, saturated fat contact con content or elevated cholesterol levels or blood, elevated blood pressure or potential obesity and weight gain. Now, here's my problem with a lot of this. And I'm going to tell and you, you're probably going to co-sign on this one to too many of our people, and when I say that, I'm talking about in the black community, there is a high level of delusion out there. And that high level of delusion means that they can eat as money, as much Doritos or whatever it is that they want to eat and justify it and say it's not bad for their health. And it's everything's going to be fine. We need uh, in, in our country, and in my opinion, there is just too much high level delusion out there. What do you think about that? Yeah, I think you I think you're on to something for sure. And what I wanted to say about understanding these companies, they hire scientists to know what's a, what what tastes addictive to you. So sugar is as addictive as cocaine. And I have a picture somewhere in all of my files. You know, would we give our children cocaine? No, but we give them platters full of donuts that are full of sugar and it has the same reaction. So there are studies that, sh that show that when given a choice between cocaine and sugar, a rat will go to sugar. 
it's, it's highly addictive. It stimulates the same areas in your brain as cocaine. And somebody who's coming off of sugar experiences similar withdrawal symptoms. Right. So, that, so that's one thing. And these, you know, they're. I don't, I don't well, want to name. Well, let me let me just let me jump in right, right okay. there. Um, we are in the holiday season and we don't want nobody to think that we're telling them that they can't eat their oxtails and they can't eat their yams and you can't eat all of the other stuff, the pies and all. We're not saying that at all, but we should be saying about the overconsumption of the same things and you can't eat the same. Look, I have put a picture on this show. I have put a picture of a black gentleman uh, eating some ribs and a, a black female sister eating some macaroni and cheese. And I got tons of at least about 15 to 20 emails. Jaquim, why are you putting that slave food out there? Why are you putting that food of the enslaver out there? I said, well, actually, I thought it was soul food, but um, I don't think that that food is any better or any worse than any food that you would get from South America or Europe. Um, one of the persons sent me a thing saying, uh, uh, people in Europe and Italy eat pasta and rice and bread every day, and they're not fat or overweight by a long shot. And I had to push back on her and tell her, uh, you, you, are you telling me there's no fat people in Europe? I, I, I think what you're trying to say is no longer the same thing. Yes. They didn't eat a lot of highly processed food, but in the in the same thing, we didn't eat a lot of highly processed food in the 1940s and the 1950s. If you go to Europe now, they got McDonald's and KFC and all that stuff, just like every place else. What do you say about that? You're, you're right. They do. And what's happening, you mentioned the word obesity a little while ago. Actually, the new term is globesity. <laughs> obesity the pandemic. Is a global epidemic. So there are countries that at one point had issues with starvation. They are now on the opposite end of the continuum and they have issues with obesity. And a lot of it stems from soda consumption. Oh, yes. You know, just packed with added sugars. And, you know, when you talked about food, you know, I when I work with my clients, I'm not putting them on a diet. I don't even like to use the term diet because Neither did I. because when somebody says, I'm going to go on this two week diet, they're like, oh, okay, I can do a two week diet. That's what they're, that's what they're saying. But what they're thinking is on day 15, I'm going to get the biggest bucket of cheesy fries because they don't realize that it needs to be a lifestyle modification. We need to eat, you know, there are no good food, bad foods, no good guys, bad guys type thing. But we need to be more educated on what we're eating and how it's grown. Because the food that we're consuming now is not the same food of our ancestors. The, the, right. the soil is different. The processing is different. So, you know, we can't, right. continue, and their, their activity levels are different. Yeah, you know, absolutely. so they're out. You know, whether it's in the field or walking to work or whatever, a lot of people in America are eating foods and sitting down. Right. So, you know, we've got to understand where we are and we have to understand, you know, kind of what we're doing, the example that we are presenting for the next generation, because I'm concerned yeah. about the next generation. Yes. So I'm a teacher by trade and we haven't always had conversations about ADD and ADHD. But and it was I always read, there. What'd you say? It was always there. Yeah, but I mean, but not like where we, we have children on medication and things like that. And I can remember yes. almost 50 years ago when I was doing my student teaching and seeing that in the textbooks to have a child with those type of attention deficit disorders in your classroom. It was nothing like what I read in the textbook. And I can remember having a family member with a child that was diagnosed with ADD. And the first thing I asked, what are you feeding him? Because we have to understand, again, it's a business. And there are buzzwords in the nutrition industry, like whole grains and extra protein. So 
with the the um how, how do I want to say it with the kind of loopholes that's the word I want to say the loopholes that the food industries know about they can slap a whole grain symbol on a box of cereal and say now with whole grains and parents are thinking oh that's right i'm doing something well, great for well, my child let me let me let me push on that yes they actually can do that and they because our governments allow that particular uh loophole or the fda or whatever allows that to be put in for manufacturers but i will say this there's about 35 foods that are in the United States today that a lot of us eat that are banned in other countries that we consider oh, we consider uh, not as developed countries. And even oh, yeah. developed countries won't allow a lot of our meat products in certain places. And let me let me just uh, one more thing that, about food that I want to get to is um, a lot of people. You, you mentioned it, that they slap on whole grain or, or whatever. But also, um, a couple of years ago, was big for the wheat gluten. Gluten-free mm -hmm. this and gluten-free that and, and all that stuff. And, and we saw the rise in colon cancer. And uh, there's a couple of studies that have found that there was a, a, a link with it. A couple of studies have found it. Not enough, but uh, there's a couple of studies that found the link. Again, food is we cannot live without food. We need right. food. It's, it's like one of the three primaries, water, air, uh, you know, oxygen, food, shelter, air. We need that. So we have to be more demonstrative with our political leaders to make sure that the food in America is safe. And right now, I will say that a lot of the food in America is not safe. I, I, w I think you're right. I think you're right. And, you know, we, we need to understand, again, it's a business. When they put on that now with more whole grain, it's still a sugar-based cereal. It's still a sugar-based cereal. So we, we've got to, to, to make some adjustments to that. And, you know, I, I think that, you know, kind of things in moderation, like when you talked about the holidays, you know, as I talk to audiences, as I talk to my clients, you know, as a former teacher, words are really important. And so, you know, I spent most of my time teaching second grade. I never told my students don't run because what they heard was run. When we were indoors, I told them, use your walking feet. You can hop, you can skip. But I never said don't run because they heard run. So when you tell somebody, you know, that they can't have chocolate. Well, what they hear is have chocolate and who wants to feel deprived? So I tell people, change our language. I choose not to have chocolate. Now I'm in control. The chocolate doesn't have power over me. So during the holidays, if I choose to have a cookie, then I choose to have a cookie and I'm done with it. You know, yeah, so we well, got to- Yeah, go ahead, go ahead, finish that thought. So we've got to be mindful of, you know, what we're doing. And speaking of mindful, you know, I'm, I'm a proponent of mindful eating because if we're not mindfully eating, we're mindlessly eating. So mindlessly eating is hands in and out of a bag because you don't know what the portion is at that point. Next thing you know, the bag is, is empty. Mindfully eating means sitting down at the table. Um, you know, no devices, no distractions, having conversations. Get that, Jakim. People having conversations at a table. Well, that's an anomaly. Most people just texting each other at the table. But to really well, have well, a when I was when I was growing up, they said, don't talk with food in your mouth. Right. And you should. <laughs> <laughs> but I will I will say this before you go to the mindful and before we get off this food thing, I want to address two of the th things from our emails that I got. Okay. Um, one of them, uh, this guy says this is the reason why he eats nothing but Mexican food and he think he can't get fat off of Mexican food. Uh, I'm, I'm going to tell you most Mexican food in the United States ain't made by Mexicans and most of it ain't even, uh, ain't even authentic. 
So, yes, mm -hmm. it's like when I go to one of my favorite dishes and when I go to a Chinese restaurant is egg foo young. That's not even a, a, a Chinese dish. It's an American dish made by Chinese to for the American taste. But remember, it's that the prep preparation of the food is one aspect. When that food comes out the field, when it goes to the manufacturer, I have seen more recalls in the last five years or don't eat this out because you, you try to eat healthy and the greens are some of the some of the most stuff that have salmonella or, or E. coli in it. So, I mean, it's damn if you do, damn if you don't type of type of situation. What do you do then? I'm a proponent for home cooking. <laughs> because when you cook at home and you're preparing it, you know what's going in it. And then you're also doing it not because you're on a timer having to get all of this food out to people in the restaurant. You're doing it with a different level of love and care and concern. And that comes through in the foods that we consume. So, you know, I, I rarely eat out. Right. Um, if I'm and on the road, if I'm on the road, that's different. But then I'm still making healthy choices, you know, when, when I'm on the road. As much as you can. Absolutely. As, as much as you can. And, you know, uh, there are people who eat out uh, five, six times a, uh, uh, a week. And a lot of times it's almost every meal that they have. So, uh, yeah, we I, I don't believe in the thing that it's. Uh, soul food is slave food, enslavement food. I don't think it's the highest quality food, but but not everybody's eating filet mignon. You don't have filet mignon, then you may have to adapt. But do not come to me and saying that the European food is better when they're eating snails in France. I'm telling you that, and snails got a lot of bacteria and virus in them. I'm going tell you right there. All right, y'all, we're going to be right back with Nicole Surratt. We got a little bit more of, uh, let's see what we're going to do. We're going to do uh, <coughs> the state senator in Pennsylvania, my sister, Representative Donna Bullock, and we'll be right back with the Hard Talk with Jock Kim Show. Peace. Because when I get on a plane... I don't expect the airline to tell me they have a few bad apples on the flight crew. Or when I go to the emergency room, I don't expect the doctors to tell me there's a few bad apples working in the emergency room that day. And so the citizens of Pennsylvania do not expect from their law enforcement to have a few bad apples. So Peace and blessings. This is your man, Jack Kim, from the Hard Talk with Jack Kim Show. Here's the number five reasons I do not talk about sports on the Hard Talk with Jack Kim Show, unless it's social or it's about pay. Here's number five. No one pays me to talk about sports, and it doesn't matter to me. Number four. We've got enough talking heads to talk about sports. Sports can be a distraction. Does it change anything in the black community for me to talk about sports? Number two, if it's not about sports wagering, it doesn't matter. Number one, the number one reason is because a guy who's six, four and a half, who is black, that's what they want you to talk about, not social and political issues. Peace and blessings, y'all. We're back with the Hard Talk with Jack M. Show. Uh, it's back, in fact, uh, uh, my 49ers beat up on the Eagles the other day, and uh, I did not watch it. Why? Because I'm still boycotting the NFL, and I don't care. But there you go. And, it, and that's from a guy who both played football, basketball, and, and played in high school and the Army. Um yeah, we're, we're talking about health and wellness in the black community. And one of the things that we're going to talk to Sister Nicole, we're going to end it up with this one, uh, sis. Uh, we're going to end it up with uh, training and exercise. And that's a, a subject I do know about conditioning. Um, so many people don't want to put that work in. 
Your health is the number one thing. It is number one. In fact, your health is even more important than your wealth to a certain point because your if you don't have health, you won't be keeping your wealth because it can cost you. So I, I want to talk about that, why there's so many of our brothers and sisters seem to be including in my family and if you're watching in brooklyn if you're watching down here in delaware you know who i'm talking about you know why i'm talking about it because we had this conversation when are you going to take charge of your wellness and that's all i want to say what, what do you say about that ma'am i did my facebook live today and i ended it with a quote you know we are what a few weeks away from the end of the month, the beginning of a new year. And so many people make New Year's resolutions. The dumbest but things the thing ever. is, yeah. <laughs> you know, your life won't improve. Your life won't get any better just because we flip a page. No. You've got to do something. You've got to do something. It, and, and we don't even use the term exercise we're, we're moving away from that now because right, we do. People, I, I use training and conditioning yeah when people hear exercise they think oh now i gotta join a gym now i gotta spend money on clothes and blah 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 so the term is movement move your body walking the dog counts gardening counts we need to be doing something and where we are moving every single day movement sure and we're not doing that we're not yeah. doing that enough well, at all. I got to be honest with you. We still use that word. I'm in using any soft language. I'm going to be hard on you, and we're going to use exactly the words that you need to hear. We ain't going to do no soft language here just so that you can make it appease you. You need to train. You need to condition. If you ain't getting out there, if you ain't doing it, you don't put the work in or not. Put it in or not. Don't matter to me. It's going to matter to you. So I, I'm, I'm I'm a big opponent of that, but let me let me just say this: um, we do a lot of training from Tai Chi to Qigong. We do also uh, boxing and martial arts, and and also the, you know weightlifting and and cardio stuff. Uh, one of the things that I used to see all the time, and I, I I'm used to irks me, um, is that people of a certain age. We'll say between 40 to about 65, 70 years old. For me, I trained a lot of men who had erectile dysfunction. And we used to do a lot of leg work on them. And of course, they were on high blood pressure medicine. And anybody who knows anything about high blood pressure medicine, um, if you're on those high blood pressure medicine, you can get erectile dysfunction because of the way those medicines go. You got to educate you. Let me tell you something, y'all. You got to educate yourselves out there. But we used to do a lot of body, lower body work. We used to do a lot of squats. We used to do a lot of deadlifts to really get pumping in the lower part of your body. Men have a tendency not to do it. And when I used to train for uh, mixed martial art, a couple of mixed martial art fighters, I used to tell them, you better train here. The arms, we got that. We got that upper body. But if you really want to get circulation, you really got to get the movement. And I'm going to piggyback off what you said. Doing those exercises, doing those training and conditioning in the movement of lower, got a couple of my clients off of their high blood pressure medicine, at least reduce the doses so that they actually would, would, uh, would have a, a decent erection. That's important. Okay. Yeah. So, yeah, this is, you know, we, we talked about highly processed food. We talked about overconsumption and... One of the things that I, I want to shoot out there, and I'm going to get your, your opinion on here before we get off tonight. On any given post, people are going to defend what they don't want to stop eating. So, listen, I got more people telling me, ain't that wrong with macaroni cheese? Please, 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 please. <laughs> they, you know, they was doing the whole Shirley season. I was like, listen, ain't nobody tell you to stop it. You just can't eat that every day. Right, you really right, right. can't. 
I'm sorry. I love it. I don't eat Mexican food every day. I don't eat Italian. Italian food, some of the worst. All that pasta, all that. Don't eat it every day. That's all I'm saying. What do you say about that? <laughs> I agree. <laughs> don't eat it every day. And and I think, you know, we've got some new models. You know, years ago, there was the the, the my plate, the, the pyramid, the food pyramid. Oh, remember that. So that has had a number of iterations over the years. And now it's a plate, which I think right. makes a whole lot of sense. You know, but we need to have more fruits and vegetables on our plates that needs to be half of our plates and a smaller amount of grains and, and, and um, lean proteins. Um, I think we need to be mindful of dairy um, that, you know, some of the things that people are allergic to, we need to be drinking a whole lot more water. Um, and so we, we need to know like what things that are good for our bodies. Cause I, I know, listen to your body. You got to listen to your body. Absolutely. 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 You're, you're absolutely correct. And you know, when you talked about, what people are eating, for me, you know, I, I come back to the stress component. So my question for some people is, you know, not only what you're eating, but what's eating you? Because stress Ooh, like that. is problematic for a lot of people. And we respond differently. And we've got to get to a place where we know what our stress triggers are. We know how it impacts our bodies. For one person, it might be a headache. It might be a stomach ache. It might be irritability. It might be that inability to sleep at night. So what is it that we can do to really manage our stress? You know, somebody could have a stressful day at work and they come home and the cookie jar is calling their name. So they are, do they eat just one cookie? No, they pack, they finish off the whole box. And somebody else could have a stressful in incident at work and they don't even come home, Jakim. They take a, right. a, a line over to the mall for some retail therapy. So now stress is impacting them financially. They're snapping at people. So they're emotionally impacted. Other people are tossing and turning at night because they can't turn their brains off. So yes. we've got to do something about our stress. We have to understand that self-care is not selfish, but that it is essential to every right. aspect of our health and wellness. And, you know, it's not just about going to the hair salon or the nail salon. We need to be doing some stress management every day. If it's just to go outside to inhale and exhale, all of that yes. counts. But one of the things that I enjoy doing is, is helping people expand their self-care, what I call toolkit. You know, so I do a lot of things and I'm on the whole range from something gentle like yoga to Tai Chi Cha to the line dancing to the opposite end where I'm doing kickboxing and extreme step. I like to do it all because you right, know, what you say may not work for you tomorrow. And we need to have that variety, like strength training and, and right. resistance training That's, is great yeah, exactly. for the balance. And the more seasoned we get, you know, balance gets to be an issue because a lot of people, you know, older people are falling. And now yeah. we're breaking well, bones and, and that well, next, me, next. One of the one of the things that we used to always teach people is that, especially when I, and you know, uh, being larger uh, and pushing a lot more weight than most people, than a lot of people, we used to always say that power wasn't the thing that we were losing. I can get a fifty-year-old or sixty-year-old to push over here on my <laughs> on my bench press uh, three twenty-five. I can get you there. But the, it's not the power that you, we really lose when we get older. To me, it's more flexibility is what we lose because of the alignment and stresses to our alignment, whether it be the hips, the knees, the ankles, the shoulders, that alignment situation. But let me just, I, I do have a question before we get out of here. I have to ask this. Um, the uh, sister uh, sent me this question about breast cancer. She said, so, uh, have you seen a lot of false positives in breast cancer uh, from mammograms or whatever other uh, diagnostic they use? Over the years, I think the false positives has they have declined. And part of that is the technology, the 3D mammography. So, ladies, okay. if you are, are listening, 
you know, if you're getting your mammogram, I, I think it's more standard than it used to be when it first came out, but you need to get a 3D mammogram because the picture that it shows you is much clearer. So we were getting a lot of false negatives with the 2D mammograms. And, um, you know, I- I and false I, positives as well? Well, well, like, enough to they had calcium build up or anything like that in the in the breast. Right. It could be it could be something from dense breasts, and there a whole lot of women of color have dense breasts. So if you get one of those letters after your mammogram, I mean they have to do it by law to send it out, but then they don't always do a good job from my perspective of explaining what breast density means and why you need to get another round of testing done. So, um, so I think the false negatives, false positives are decreasing. Um, and I think technology has a lot to do with that. Great. So before, Great. before you ask me something else or before we, we sign off, I just wanted to, to say this and, and you jogged my memory when you said right before break that I could get something to drink. And of course I have my water right here. We have known for years that there's a connection between alcohol assumption alcohol consumption and increased breast cancer risk. Mm. What we're finding is that there's a greater correlation than we initially thought. And that's important to know, especially as the holidays are, are right upon us. I heard something on KYW that alcohol sales are the greatest between Thanksgiving and New Year's. And so when I, in the work this, that I do in Delaware, and I heard researchers say that I put on my teacher hat. And the first thing I thought of was we've got to get this information out to our young ladies on college campuses, because that's where a lot of them are starting to experiment with alcohol consumption. They are binge drinking and things like that. And we need to know the things that will help us reduce our risk of breast cancer. And alcohol consumption is a part of that. Yeah, well, yeah. I'll throw this in there because it was interesting last year when I started to share that information to, with the audiences, they wanted to know, well, how much could they drink or what could they drink? Because <laughs> what they were trying to do to Kim is they were trying to come under the radar. But if you're drinking a lot of sugary alcohol, alcohol drinks, then again, here's that sugar coming into play. He absolutely right, and and I will I will say this. I'm going to end this. The people who watch my show know that I always say this uh, when we have discussions about alcohol and drugs. Alcohol and drugs are meant to ruin your life. Be very careful with them. Period. Alcohol and drugs are meant to ruin your life. That's the industry that they are. So listen, this has been a, a heartfelt. We have to do it again. We we can get some. Uh, we can, we can narrow in on that particular subject. Uh, this has been a, the Hard Talk with Jack Kim show with Nicole Surrett. Now, she's going to give you one more time before we leave how you can get in contact with her. Go ahead, sis. Please reach out to me at ahealthcoach.com. I'm sorry, ahealthcoachforme.com. Go to my, my website. Send me a note. I am also on LinkedIn. Um, I am happy to... Um, I, I offer complimentary consultations. You know, whatever your health and wellness goals are, I work with you. I really do serve as a coach where, you know, we're, we're coming up with the plays, but my clients go out onto the field, onto the court, and they execute knowing that they've got me as their accountability partner that, you know, when they get down, I'm going to help them back up and get them back, you know, get them back on track. Um, you know, sometimes when we we start to, um, you know, we want to make some improvements and something doesn't go well. We're like, oh, well, it's Wednesday. You know, I over ate, So I might as well just wait until Monday to get back on track. No, my suggestion is the next opportunity you have to make a better decision, then make a better choice. So we don't have to wait until Monday. We don't have to wait until a new month. Wait until that next time and then make a better choice. And it's the small changes over time that give the greatest results. 
Well, we we like to say here on the Hard Talk with Jock Kim show, uh, like we did for 2023 when it came in, uh, January 1st was another Sunday for me. So I don't it don't mean anything to me. Uh, Every day when you wake up, you got the two C's. You got a chance and a choice. Yo, listen, this has been your man, Jack Kim with the Hard Talk with Jack Kim show. And listen, we got uh, a sister Nicole Surratt on here. All she was on here. For most of the hours. So we're going to have her back on. Remember, you can check us out on Delaware Info Now. That's Delaware Info Now, 24 hours from now. This will be playing on there. You can watch it to your heart's content.